Hi everyone, today I want to show you an even faster sand or concrete powder duper. So this is a little bit more complicated than the versions I showed before because I need to put in my effort to make it even faster, but 16% uh, faster than my old version. So I choose to use the old end portal, despite that it's um, slower overall because it just has less end portal blocks, but you could also use this concept for the end dimension version and also make it faster. But the percentage-wise increase um, is greater for the overworld end portal version. So instead of 108k items power, you get 126,000 items power. Instead of using the normal 8 game tick cycle for the sand, I'm using a 6 game tick cycle for two of the four sides. I need those extra pistons on top of the end portal blocks, which prevents me from doing it for all 12 gravity blocks. But yeah, I would say let's turn this machine on. So those are the normal versions that you know from my 108k version, and this is the 6 game tick cycle uh, side. I'm gonna explain it later, but I would say now let's head to the end dimension. So here in the end dimension we could check how many items are coming in, and the blue ones is the 6 game tick cycle, and the yellow ones come from the 8 game tick cycle, and as you can see, get a lot more from those sides. So how does this work? So this involves a lot of solo tick chaining. Um, basically every six game ticks we push the falling block entity towards the boats and after three game ticks it lands on the sticky piston right here. And after three game ticks we also retract the slime blocks but before it happens we push out the concrete powder blocks upwards and basically in the position where the slime blocks are uh, moments ago we push in the new blocks so they have some time to fall down. So this machine is quite complicated by now, and also I saw this one, if you turn it off, then sometimes this could happen, so the sticky piston loses the slime blocks, and in order to turn this back on, you also have to put the gravity blocks on top of those pistons. The 8 game tick cycle, they work without any maintenance. I can also try to explain what happens with this simple version right here. So it starts with the concrete powder block, which sits in the air for two game ticks. Just use wool here so it doesn't fall down. Then after two game ticks, it converts into a falling block entity. And then we wait one additional game tick, so it would fall down just a little bit. Then this next game tick, we push up the falling block entity from this piston below, so it gets some vertical momentum. And from the side, um, with those slime blocks, it gets some horizontal momentum. Uh, it's important that the piston here um, ex extends first, and then this one, um, otherwise it just wouldn't work. But both of those extend in the same game tick. Then, um, yeah, two, I think two, yeah, two, two game ticks later, the falling block entity um, would collide with the entity portal um, and gets repelled by those boats we have in there, with some entities in there, so it doesn't go through the end portal. And basically it's pushed back. And then in the same game tick, two things happen. So the falling block entry goes to the uh, to the end dimension, but also in the same game tick, uh, it materializes and forms um, a new gravity block right there. So that's how the duping works. Um, so basically we have this slime block uh, extended, and then we also retract it after three game ticks. Um, but of course we would pull the, the block with it. That's how the eight game tick cycle version works. Um, but we want a faster version, that's why we had to put in the extra effort. So what we do instead, in the same game tick where the slime block retracts, we push out the concrete powder block with this stick piston right here and a zero tick. Uh, this is possible because we add some block event delay and we could actually extend and retract the piston before the slime blocks retract in, in, inside of the same game tick. Um, so what ha happens now, all happens in the same game tick. So we're gonna um, retract those sli slime blocks. Basically they would turn into block 36 and stay and yeah, convert into a normal block again in the old position. But we also do it in the same game tick. We push over the concrete powder block with this stick piston right here. And since um, the slime block structure is only there visibly, but no longer actually occupies the block. We can already push down the concrete powder block again. Um, so yeah, it's scheduled that those blocks 36s would convert into a normal block again. Um, and we can also push down the block again. 
So now the cycle starts new after yeah, two more game ticks. The uh, slime blocks would materialize again, and after three game ticks, we can push again. But then if we also wait for two game ticks, this turns into a falling block entity again. Then we wait one more game tick, and it would start fall down. By now, we have the slime blocks again here, and then we can push again. And that's how the six game tick cycle works. And now let's also go through the redstone. Um, so by activating this lever, we start the normal eight game tick lock for this side and a six game tick lock for the other two sides. Um, so this is a little more complicated uh, than the eight game tick cycle because we also need to create a certain three game tick pulse to power the sticky pistons, etc. And let's take a look at the six game tick lock first, how you can make one of those. Um, so build it up right here. Um, so what happens, this redstone block is sent over this position and would start powering this sticky piston right here, um, which after three game tick causes this piston to extend again. So the redstone block is sent back from here to there. Um, basically, and this is how we get a three game tick pulse on this side right here. Um, and also uh, after three game ticks, basically this also retracts. So this sticky piston here is powered with a zero tick pulse and sends back the block into the other position immediately. Here we have a normal piston to send the block back, which also happens immediately. But because we use a normal piston, um, it takes two game ticks until it arrives right here. And then this piston would wait an additional game tick before it starts extending. So let's also turn this on, but this happens quite fast. Yeah, it's really hard to follow. And basically here we have a three game tick pulse. So a normal piston would ac actually extend and retract a block. And if I could place it, as you can see here, also this redstone block would extend and retract. But if I would use, let's quickly stop this again. But if we would put a redstone block right here and power another piston, then this piston would receive zero ticks, which will become important. So let's go back to this version, and here you can see why we need a special three game tick pulse. So this sticky piston here is powered for three game ticks and retracts again. And we have this block event delay. So instead of powering this piston here to send the block back directly, we have some block event delay. So we put the redstone block into a quasi connectivity position. First this piston gets powered, which updates this piston, which updates this piston, which updates this piston. And this way we get some block event delay, which is important to separate the concrete powder block from the slime blocks. So that's how I achieved that. Uh, we can also take a look at it. So basically I just power this piston right here. Uh, with the three game tick pass, that's why we get a zero tick. And then power the sticky pistons, which would uh, separate the concrete powder from the slime blocks. And then this piston would retract, and we also have this redstone line here to get more zero ticks. Since, as you might remember, uh, we get the zero tick pulse when we extend this piston here for three game ticks. This redstone block is sent over in the same game tick immediately, and would start powering those pistons right here. So if you have another zero tick pulse generator um, in the same game tick, we push out this concrete block, um, but also push down the slime block with the redstone block attached. But Pushing down the slime block with the redstone block, the redstone block happens um, yeah, one block event delay later. That's why we have a zero tick pulse for just a short moment. So this block would um, yeah, turn to block 36, and then the redstone lines can connect in the same game tick, but just a little bit later, also the pulse is removed, and then we get the other zero tick pulse. So this all happens in the same game tick. The concrete powder is sent up here, and then here, this receives zero tick pulse. And then we still have to, this update chain, so all of those pistons are powered by cross connectivity and they update themselves in a chain. Here we have the second Citric Pulse generator, which does the same and powers those blocks. So the block is sent from here to there to there, and then it gets sent down. So that's how this contraption works. What I forgot to mention is that we power those normal pistons right here, which would send up the falling block entity again um, before this sticky piston with slime blocks and manipulate the update order by using repeaters and your yeah, comparator respectively. So I hope you could follow this explanation. I know this is quite complicated and complex, but isn't that what makes redstoning fun? 
You also might be wondering if we could make it even faster by accelerating those sides here with the yellow blocks. The moment we have an 8 game tick cycle, um, I tried a long time to come up with something to use a 6 game tick cycle right here, but it doesn't seem possible. And then also tried to at least have a 7 game tick cycle for those sides. This was even more complicated than a 6 game tick cycle and it came really close to, to it working, but it just didn't work out. We ju I just still have one issue which I might find a solution for, um, but yeah, it might, it might take some time if I'm re and I don't know if I'm really interested in doing that anymore. Um, then another option, which also might be a possibility here, we could have placed one of more of the sticky pistons and maybe run um, this side on six game ticks, so the, the middle block here and the other ones on a slower cycle. Of course, the slime blocks here would collide all the time, and maybe, I'm not 100% sure, maybe you could run those on 9 game ticks and the, one, the middle one in, on 6 game ticks. But the improvement would be just 2k items per hour, and it's definitely not worth it. I mean, the effort would be insane just for this small improvement. Um, I'm not gonna even attempt to do that. Let's also talk about the end dimension end portal version, which has more portal blocks. So we could definitely uh, increase the rates by 12,000 blocks per hour. We could run the blue blocks again on six game ticks. We have enough space for sticky pistons right here to send the blocks back. But we also have the additional blocks for the side here. Um, here we alternate between sending the, uh, the yellow blocks in. So eight every eight game ticks we send in this block, but four t game ticks later we send in um, this block right here, and they both would materialize on this spot, but be pulled back instantly, that's why we can alternate right here. Um, probably would have issues again with colliding slime blocks if you would try to run those um, at 8 game ticks, so might work with 9 game ticks uh, and so on, but yeah, it would get complicated, but there's definitely some room for improvement still left. So in case you want to build this, as always you can check out the world download, but for normal survival I would recommend the slow version, which is a lot simpler to build and is not that much slower. And also, yeah, it's a lot lag friendly, the slow version, because it doesn't use this large amount of redstone dust. Also, let me know if you are, were interested in the explanation, this detailed explanation of the mechanics. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.